Okay, and welcome to today's shear. Today's shear is Yuma Ayin Bays, Yuma 72. Um, we'll incorporate the Derech Eretz into the Chiddush, into the shear, everything in one. Maybe you'll like it like this. Uh, the Gemara starts off on Ayin Aleph and Bays on the bottom, the last line. The Gemara says, How do you know? How do you know? That each strand of fabric by the meal, by the outer coat that the Kohen Gadol wore, was 12 threads. Uh, it's a Kalil is lashon of braiding. Uh, the parochas, uh, we know, was six threads um, together. Uh, in one string, um, and called el is is braided, so if it's braided, it has to be at least two, so therefore two times six is twelve. Veneilif mishulio, why don't you learn from the rimon, of the bottom of the, of the meal, and it's, uh, circles, the pomegranates there on the bottom, the balls. Malahal and shmona there, it's eight threads together, afkan shmona. Don and kli mi kli, and don and kli mi you learn kalim from another kli, the parochas, you don't learn it from a tachshit, from an adornment. A tachshit, it's just a uh, decoration, it's accessory. We talked about that before. Uh, tachshit kli. Ad rabba, the Mark says, Dan gufo mi gufo, vein dan and gufo ma'alma. You should learn from the actual baggage itself. You learn the top of the meal from the bottom of the meal, then learn from something else. Hainu da'amrina, on the sharp of God, mishal never behen sheish. The Gemara finally resorts to the answer that we said the word, it says the word sheish five times in the Torah, five drushas. One is uh, to teach you that other times, other places where it doesn't say the word sheish, you learn even there it's six threads. And since it says kolil, so two times six is, is twelve. Parochas esrim ba'arba. The parochas is twenty-four threads for each of the strings. Dalid de shisa shisa. Uh, Four times six. It says four four types of wool there, and each of them was six. It says sheish there, so sheish is six. So four times six equals twenty-four. Odina below dina. There's no one to argue on that. Choshen ve'efod, esrim v'shmona. The choshen ve'efod were twenty-eight threads. Minala and the chsiv. Asisa choshen mishpat ma'ise choshev k'ma'ise efod. Tasenu zahav tchelas arg vargamar with the last shani v'sheish mashzar arba de shisa shisa. So it says four pieces of uh, fabric tchelas arg with the last shani v'sheish mashzar. So there was four times six. Um, it says sheish there. So each is six. Esrin arba zahav arba and and you incorporate. I think the article is the word filigree. I don't know how you pronounce it exactly, but <clears throat> a thread of uh, of gold. Uh, is four, so therefore twenty-four plus four is twenty-eight. Highest string of Tmanaya, twenty-eight. Say gold should be six, just like the other four fabrics over there. Amar Bacha, Bar Yaakov, Amar Kra, Vekitzei Psilim, Psil Psilim, Harei Kan Dalin. This is the word you cut Psilim. Psil is would have been one, but Psilim, uh, Psilim is a, a thread. Uh, that's two. And Mekitzates, so you cut the threads into two, so therefore you have two cut into two, which is four. Rekan Dalit. Ravashi, Amar Rashi, this is another another way to prove it's only four. Amar Kra, Lasos, Pesach, Atchel, Desvilach, Agamon. The Zav is to be incorporated into each of the other woolen fabrics. Heichinab, and Navid Arba, the Trey Trey. If you're going to do uh, two th- threads of, of gold in each of the other four, Avalut Manaya, it's going to be eight, and we know that it's not, it's supposed to be six. Says Sheish, now the tray, the tray, 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 the tray, the chat. Now the tray, the tray, tray, the tray, the chat, chat. Make two uh, of the fabrics have each have two threads of gold, and the other two fabrics have one thread of gold. Vasisa, it says Vasisa, then it lists all the different materials you make in the Choshen. And the ephod, so therefore we assume they're all she call the seals of shovels, they'll have to be similar. So therefore the minimum amount is four th- four fabrics, so each get one thread of gold. And that's twenty-eight. Amarachava, Amarav Yehuda, Amakareya, Big Day Kuna, Loke. Someone who rips the Big Day Kuna gets Malkus. Shinemar Lo Yikareya. 
Uh, the Pasuk says when you make the meal, you should make a hem on the neckline uh, so that it shouldn't make it stronger uh, on the neckline. So therefore, when the coin, the coin moves his, uh, moves around his neck, it shouldn't uh, rip. Uh, maybe it just means make a ham. It doesn't mean that there's a lav. You get malchus if you actually were to rip it. Mixiv shaloyi kareya. Does it say she with a shin shaloyi kareya that you should make a safa that it shouldn't rip? It says uh, safa aloyi kareya. So therefore aloyi kareya. The darshan to me that you get malchus it's a lav for ripping big day kahuna. A couple of questions over here. First of all, lo yikareya is in the passive. It shouldn't be ripped. Um, doesn't say lo yikra. If 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 it's a lav, usually you say the word lo yikra. You shouldn't rip it. Um, Second of all, on Mikareya Big Day Kuna, it's only talking about the Me'il over here. How do we learn other Big Day Kuna? And specifically because it says Shaloyi Kareya, it says in a passive way. So you now there's two types of Yisurim. There's an Isra on the Gavra and there's an Isra on the Chefsa. So if it's an Isra on the Gavra, I would have said Shaloyi Kareya. A person shouldn't rip it. Shaloyi Kareya, it sounds like it's going in the Chefsa. So in the Chefsa, the Pasuk is the Me'il. So it's more likely to assume. It's only on the meal, so why is the Gemara saying Mekareya Big Day Kahuna? To this, I want to answer, you're going to like this. I want to say that we bring in a little Derek Heriot's over here, and we ask a fundamental question. Check it out on Google. They ask this question. Type it in. What is the difference between ripping and tearing? Is there a difference between ripping and tearing? What's the difference? Uh, they'll give you different answers. Some of the, I think I looked at this up. Some say ripping is you rip it out of a notebook, tear it. Uh, it's done on paper. It's about different materials. Tearing is clothes and ripping is paper. I want to say a different shot. That uh, to tear something is to to do it in the active sense. Uh, to tear something, you tear it uh, on purpose. Uh, ripping, something rips. Your clothes rip or something gets ripped, that happens passively. It happens um, by accident or it happens in a passive way where you're not intending to do it. Uh, that's, and that's why the puzzle says Shaloyi Kareya, Lo Kareya, says in the passive form to tell you that the Isser is an Isser of ripping. Now, what's different? What does it matter whether it's called ripping or tearing? The answer is, is that rip could also be R-I-P, which is whatever, not the Jewish religion, but uh, other religions, Christian religion, I think. They say R.I.P. on the gravestone. Rest in peace. That's what it means. R.I.P. Rest in peace. So that's what the Pasuk is saying over here. Lo Kareya, it shouldn't rest in peace. The person who is responsible, because it says Yikareya, it says in a passive form, so we know that it's the, the English translation of the Pasuk is it shouldn't be ripped, not it shouldn't be torn. Uh, and therefore it's R.I.P. So therefore, uh, that's why you get Malchus for that. You don't rest in peace, you get Malchus. Instead of resting in peace, you get actually uh, Tsar, you get uh, whipped for that. Uh, if you like that, uh, there's more to come. And this is, uh, this, this is the synthesis of, uh, of Derek Eretz. Oh, my... my uh, my my student, my uh, my shear goer has arrived. What do you have to say about that shot? You like that shot? <laughs> Did you hear? Like you were getting to this real nice <laughs> What do you mean? It's a beautiful chedesh. It says lo kareya. It says in the past oh, before. Ah, kareya, kareya. Ah, North Korea. South Korea. Ah, he's he, he's coming on to new things also. Korea it could be Korea. Oh, Kore Korea. North Korea. South Korea. Oh. He's saying there's a connection with North Korea and South Korea. Um, maybe, maybe you can come up with something like that, like South Korea, the capital of Seoul. So uh, you have no rest to your soul, so you get whipped. I don't know exactly. There's also a connection, but I, I like what I said better. You can connect it somehow to uh, dead, and then you could connect it somehow to the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead. And then he could go into like, you know, all the... What does that have to do with Big Day Kuna? They wore Big Day Kuna? The Grateful Dead? I don't think so. <laughs>
Achaz, <laughs> who is it? Bel uh, uh, He wore the big day right? That's right. That's right. Not, not the Grateful Dead. All right. Um, I don't know if we have big day Kahuna anymore. If we have big day Kahuna, go to Amazon. Got a good price. <laughs> I hear it's retailing for only a thousand dollars for the. the they told the coin on Yom Kippur. Today is the big, is your big day. What does that mean? Big day, Kohen. Big day, Kuna. Ah, it's a big day. Big day, Kuna is like big day. All right, listen. You have to be smart when you come up with Derek Arts. You can't just do anything. It has to make sense. So <laughs> you can go on forever and ever with this Derek Arts, but. You have to know. You have to know. The yeah. thread. You have to have a thread. It has to be connected with threads. You know what I'm saying? You have to find the thread. The common thread. <laughs> All right. Let's get back on track over here. Um, the Gemara's... <laughs> uh, this is why it's good to have an audience because it makes it more fun. You know, people say their own two cents and some of it's worthwhile. Some of it you can make a joke out of. That's the best part. You can make jokes. So, I like having an yeah, audience. Yeah, it has to be funny. <laughs> All oh, my jokes are funny. All right. Amar of Elazar, Mazia, Hoshan, Malaifo, the Mister, Badi, Aaron, Loka. Okay. Um. It was actually uh, Naftali Bennett had a couple of hecklers yesterday. Really? I think he got up to speed yesterday, the day before. So one person was very, uh, very uh, angry that he uh, he decided on a ground operation during uh, Suk Eitan. In 2014, and one of his sons got killed because of it. So it was heckling uh, Naftali Bennett. Well, he's right. <laughs> he's right. Isn't he? Why is he right? He's right. He's right. Does that mean they shouldn't have done a ground operation? I don't know about that, but uh, I can't uh, say it's not groundless. Listen, a ground operation... Uh, he's probably right, the father, I'll be honest with you. I mean, they didn't do a ground operation this time, and what did they accomplish last time? They didn't accomplish too much. Who is he? Who is this man? Who is he? He's a general? He was ever a general? Oh, yeah, he, you know, he did work in the army. He was part of the Slayer and Makal. He was, he was part of the elite unit. Uh, like in America, they have the SEALs. They have the Slayer and Makal as uh, the elite uh, fighting unit for the, oh, they say the Israeli SEALs army. Oh, was in the Mishkan. Huh? The seal skin is in the Mishkan. It says in some of the English translations. The seal skin, they say it's skin of seals. You know? Seal skin? You know what I mean? On top of the Mishkan. It's, I think it's seal Hashim. stands for sea. To Hashim. To Hashim. Sea, air, and land. That's what it stands for. That's what they call the seals. Ah, All right. Uh, someone who uh, removes the Hoshan from on top of the ephod. Someone. Who removes the poles from the Aaron? He gets Malka. Shemer lo yizach v'lo yisuru. Maskel Rav Akiva Yaakov v'demo ki kamer Rav Mana chad kinu v'avdinu shab yirkedesh lo yizach v'lo yisuru. Maybe the, all the Torah is telling you is that you should make it uh, tight. You should secure it. That it shouldn't move. Not that you would. If you would do it, you would get Malka. Mixiv shalo yizach v'shalo yisuru. The same with the shin. It says lo yizach v'lo yisuru. Tell you that to hint to you they get Malka. We ask Riosi Rabbi Hanina Rami Ksiv Betabos Aaron and you are Badim Lo Yasuru Mimenu Ksiv Vehuva is Badov Betabos. One pasuk says that the poles of the Aaron should be uh, in the in the Tabos in the rings shouldn't move. Sounds like it shouldn't move at all. Vehuva is Badov Betabos. So you should bring it within the rings, but it can move. So which one is it? Could it move? Could you take it out? Or can you not take it out? The Mordechai says, "Aketz and misparkin me nishmatin, nishmatin. It can move around. It's loose, but it, it doesn't come out. And therefore, if you took it out, you get malchus. Tanya na mihachi betabos aron you abadim. Within the rings of the aron abad will be the bottom. Yacha lo use asim mikol matam alomar behuva as bada betabos. Same question as we said before. Even behuva as bada of kol yu yacha yu nechlasim v'yotzim." If it just says "Behuva is Bada," we should put it in. It sounds like they can move around. Talmud Lomer B'Tabas Aron Yu Abadim should be fastened. Hakitzad Mis Hakitz and Mis Parkim Einishmatin that it could move around, it could be loose, but it doesn't fall out. Amar Rabbi Chama Rabbi Chama Rabbi Chanina Ma'ide Chsev Atzei Shitim Omdim. Pasuk says that in um, uh, the Atzei Shitim that you use for the the walls, the pillar, the 
the pillars for the outside of the base of the Mishkan should be omdim. What does it mean omdim? Standing up. Omdim derech de lasan. It means that the wood uh, would be uh, placed in a way where uh, the top of the pillar would be made out of wood from the top of a tree, and the bottom of the pillar would be made from wood from the bottom of a tree. Davar omdim shem amidin sipuyan. Another shot is that they would hold up their gold, meaning Rashi, one of Rashi's explanation is that it wouldn't rot the wood and they should be able to hold a, hold up their gold plating. Maybe there's uh, 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 maybe I mean uh, the way one of the pshat the pshat I explain is the one I read in art scroll. I think that's what Rashi means over here. I tell you on the mala, I talk on the mata. It's not. I don't know why Rashi. Rashi could mean he means that it's as opposed to horizontal. Horizontal. Why would you have a half a meaning that the the so beam the should be horizontal? Log cabin. There was a log cabin. Abraham Lincoln. Uh huh. Okay, I hear. It could be a pshat. It's not clear. That's what Rashi means. It's not clear. You're right. It could be either way. I'm not sure. There's there are there's, there I saw there are a number of shots on this so. Um Davarach and Omdim Shema Tomar Avad Sivar and Abad Sikuyan. You might think that we lose hope in them, that they'll get lost. Tamalum Om the Shomdim La Olam Ul Ome Olam La Olam Ul Olamim. That they'll remain forever. We don't lose them. They're somewhere buried in Rome, maybe. Amar Abhana are they buried in Rome or they're somewhere else? I'm not sure. Why is this word srad? What does it mean? What does it mean? Amali big day kuna. The Gemara's darshans on top of iron base and base. Amali big day kuna. Learn shtayim misonei and shal Yisrael sorry to pull it. If big day kuna weren't around, so um, from the enemies of Yisrael, meaning it's euphemism for Yisrael, there would no one be remain. No remnant would be remain because the big day kuna were responsible for the Kohan being allowed to do the Avod, to bring the Karbonos. Rabbi Shmuel bar Nachmeni Amar, the Bey Rabbi Shimon, Tana begodim shagordin osan kibriyasan miklein, umasar demehen klum, that they, instead of weaving them uh, just like uh, in, in different parts and sewing them together, they actually weave it in a way that corresponds to the body of the Kohanim. It would fit them directly. Uh, we started them in Kulum, but they would would leave a little bit off that they would attach with a needlework. That's what they would attach with the sewing. big day kahuna The problem is, the Pazak says, you weave them, but you don't sew them. Weaving is done with a... Uh, a thicker uh, instrument than uh, a sewing is done with a small needle. Oreg is done with a. What is it? What is the weaving done with? What's the the piece called that you use for weaving? Uh, no, it's like a maybe a loom. I don't know. Um, I thought it was like a bigger piece. Maybe that's a uh, crocheting. Okay, O'Rig is done differently than sewing. Shnemar Maisa O'Rig. Amar Abai, let's talk about the base yad shalahem. We're talking about the sleeve, or the cuff, uh, that was attached on with sewing. Okay, the sign of base yad shalahem. The sign of base yad shalahem. It was woven by itself, it was woven by itself, and it was attached to the baget. Oh my gosh, that piece of yad, it would reach. The article says to the, the palm of the hand. Um, okay. I'm a Rechava. I don't know if it's palm in the head. I think we get away in the Voda. Um, what does Rashi say? Pieces Hayad? Um, I didn't say anything. Pieces Hayad, I would think it means to the wrist. Uh, so they could, it has supposed to fit them. Madosam, it has to fit them. Also, it doesn't get in the way of the Kolmitz. So, I'm not sure. I'm a Rechava. 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 Uh, Betzalel made three different aronos for the, the aron. It was composed of three different parts. And so he, the middle box, shall eight tisha. It was nine tfachim. It was made of wood. Pnimi shall zav shmona. The inner box was eight tfachim tall, uh, made of gold. Chitzon, uh, the box is in shall zav uh, asara. Umashu. It was ten and a little bit more, uh, made out of gold. 
The reason it was a little bit more was because um, it had to account for the bottom. It's the ten tefachim uh, to be a nine tefachim connected the middle box plus one for the kaporis plus a little bit on the bottom because it had to have uh, be bigger than the middle box on the bottom, so a little bit mashu on the bottom. Atanya echad asaru mashu, but a different bais says it was eleven tefach in the outer box and mashu. Lokash hakam adar yesh ba'av yiv tefach, hakam adar in ba'av yiv tefach. My look is whether the bottom of the box is a tefach or less than a tefach. A mashu. Why mashu? If it's eleven tefachim, so why do you need a mashu? You don't need a mashu anymore on the bottom. So then we have a zir. It's for the crown. The crown. Uh, on the top of the Aron, on top of the Kaporis, was a Mashu. Amar B'yochanan, Shlosha Zirim, there are three crowns. Shal Mizbeach, Vishal Aron, Vishal Shulchan, of the Mizbeach Azav, and the Aron, and the Shulchan. Shal Mizbeach, Zach Aron, Minatlo. He, Aron, was Zoche to the one from the Mizbeach Haktoris. Minatlo, Shal Shulchan, Zach Adabi, Minatlo, of the of the Shulchan upon him, the Lechem upon him, where the, the Shulchan will contain the Lechem upon him. Uh, David Amela, who was a king, no tell because uh, Shulchan represents a royal table. Shall uh, Aaron I die in Munahu? The one from the Aaron where it could contain the Torah, that's still remaining. Anyone wants to take it, could take it. Shema Torah Pachosu. Maybe you'll say it's less than the other two crowns. I'm a lower be Melachim Yimlochu. Meaning through the Torah, be through me, through the Torah, I'll be able to anoint kings. If you're anointing the kings, it means you're above the kings. Above the other two kings, the Malchus of the Shulchan and the Malchus of the Mizbeach. Rabbi Yochan Rami Ksiv Zar Vikarina and Zir. We say we pronounce it Zir, but it's written Zar. Zacha Nas is Lo Zir. If he's Zocha, he does it in the proper way, it'll be a crown for him. Lo Zacha uses the Torah in the wrong way, Zara Himon. It becomes foreign from him. Rabbi Yochan and Rami Ksiv Vasisa Dacha Aron At Eitz Viksiva Atsu Aron Atse Shitim. Uh, it says va'asu. Why does it say va'asu in the plural? That atam chacham sounds like atam chacham is commanded. That bnei iros are mitzuba to are are commanded to to help him out with his parnasa. Um, that's why va'asu. I ran say she do. So the question is, what does it mean va'asisa lecha aron eitz? So is it singular or is it plural? So what does the Gemara mean over here? So Rashi answers, "Mitzuvin la'asos malachto sh'aron b'tchila hitil la'kosu v'malacha al Moshe." Ach b'tchila al tzibur. I've got the cry la b'hai sidra k'sivi asmach b'am who the Gemara. He says Rashi interprets v'asisa is going on Moshe Rabbeinu the first time. V'asu is going on later generations. Um, I think the archival interprets it is that Vasisa is that it's both are Mitsuba. He's Mitsuba in his Parnasa, and people are Mitsuba to help him in his Parnasa. Not like the Gemara's Mashma, that Bnei Mitsuba in Lasos Lo that they have to do all his work for him. Alright, the Gemara says, uh, is compared to the Aron. Um, if he's not, his inner was just gold, the inner of the Aaron was gold, and the outside was gold, uh, he's not a Talmud Chacham. He's called disgusting. Why is this person acquiring Chachma? He doesn't have a good heart. Woe is to them, to the haters of Tamil Chamim, meaning Tamil Chamim, Shaoskim, the Torah, Bain Bain Yerashimim, they learn Torah, but they have no fear of heaven. Machri is Rabbiana, Echava, the Lesle Darta, the Tara, the Darte, but he has no courtyard, but he makes a gate for his courtyard. Why is he making a gate for the courtyard? The courtyard is similar to Yerashimim, um, which surrounds the house and protects the house, which is. Um, Derech Eretz combined with Torah. Torah, just learning Torah on a superficial level, before you know Derech Eretz, that's comparable to the gate. And Yerushimayim is considered the courtyard, which surrounds the house, which is Derech Eretz with the Torah. He says, don't inherit two Gehenims. What's two Gehenims? Rashi explains that 
learning in this world, a life of being a Talmud Chacham in this world. Rashi says, Rashi says, I once heard from Rosh Hashiva, he said that in this world they give you Gan Eden, uh, they give you Gan Eden for being in Gan Eden. It was referring to learning in Yeshiva as Gan Eden, and they give you Gan Eden for staying in Yeshiva your whole life and learning there. Uh, this Gemara and Rashi do not say that. They say the opposite. They say that learning is Gehenim. And, and the article says that you have to abstain from worldly pleasures. Uh, Mayim, uh, what does it say in Pirkei Avos? It says, Pasim Elach Tocha, Mayim Surash Tishta, Valarach Tisha. Sounds like that's the way of a Talmud Chacha. It doesn't sound too enjoyable. Um, so as it says, don't learn Torah and have no Yerushalayim where you get Gehenim for being in Gehenim. You live a life of Talmud Chacha, which is Gehenim. And you get a Gehenim for not having Yerushalayim. Amar Rabbi Shul ben Levi, my dear, if Zos had Torah, share Sam Moshe Zacha, what's the Russian of Sam? And Moshe plays Zacha and Asa's little Sam Chayim, Zacha and Asa's little Sam Misa. If he's okay, he does it properly, so then he'll be an elixir of life for him. Lo Zacha and Asa's little Sam Misa, it's going to kill him. Behind the Amar Rabbi, the Uman la Sama de Chayim, if he does it skillfully, he does the Torah in the proper way. It's an elixir of life. Lo uman lo sama lo la sama demosa. If you're not uh, skillful with the Torah, you don't do it in the proper way. It's gonna kill you. Amar Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, Rabbi Yonas and Rami Ksiv, Kudei Yashar Misharim, Misam Chelev. The words of Torah are straight; they make you happy. Ksiv Amar Imras Hashem Tzrufa says the words of Hashem uh, are sorry for you. They they scold you. Zacha misamachta lo zacha tzorafta. If you're zocha. Makes you happy. If you're not Zoha, it burns you. Rishla Kishamar Mgufe. The Tzrufa is a Pashat Pashat. It's Tzrufa like it's, it's pure. So Rafto here means in a negative sense, no? It scolds you. A fern, a fiery uh, cauldron. It scolds you. Rishla Kishamar Mgufe. The Kra Nafka Zacha Tzorafto. He says this one pasuk can even have a positive meaning. If you're zocha, it's a rafta lechayim. It burns you. It it uh, it's metayer you. It uh, purifies you lechayim. Lo zocha it's a rafta lemisa. If not, it purifies you. I mean, it burns you lemisa. Yer Hashem tahora medes lad. Amar Rabbi Chanina zal lo mitora betara. What's considered Yer Hashem tahora? You learn Torah when you're betara, when you're pure. My he knows the isha v'achach lo Torah. You marry a woman first, and then you learn Torah. You don't have your hurim of women that are not your wife. It is Hashem nemona. Amar Rabbi Chia bar Abba nemona he lahayid belom del. It's nemona. It's trustworthy. Uh, it'll bring testimony for you after may have asked him uh, on its learners. Ma'isa roke, ma'isa chosha. It says by the Mishkan, some of the uh, weaving was actually, uh, some of it was Maisa Rokim. Uh, and some of it was Maisa Choshe. Rokim, I think, is sewing. Maisa Choshe was weaving. Amar Lezer, Shorokim, and Makum Shachosh. When he has a different shot, he says first they would outline it, the embroidery, um, with like a, a collar, and they would embroider what well, they're going to embroider. And then they would Rokim, they would do the embroidery, uh, the, the sewing afterwards. Hanavish made the Rabbi Nechemi, Rokim, Maisa Machat. Rokim is needlework, it's sewing. Lafichach, parts of Echad. It's embroidery, so therefore it's only one face, and you see the on the, on the other side of the curtain, you see uh, see it backwards. Choshev, Maisa, Ore, Choshev is weaving. Lafichach, Shnei, Partsufos, therefore you had two different faces on the two different sides of the curtain. Um, we thank you, uh, Shmuel Silver, for attending our share today. It was a pleasure having you. Um, it always adds to have an audience um, and if you enjoyed the share subscribe, like and uh, make a comment tell me what do you think about this share I want to hear your thoughts All right. take care, bye